Is your caller ID flagged as spam or telemarketing or suspected scam? I can help, or at least we can try. This is your first day in real estate, and I am your real estate sales trainer and coach, James Festini. And this is the program that's gonna teach you how to sell more real estate in less time. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you for waiting for my next piece of content. It's been a while. I've been in the work mode and I've been in the lab trying to find a solution to a problem that many of us face. And I'd like to think that I'm one of the first ones really talking about it, even though they're talking about it. I don't really see any creators in this space looking for a solution like I have been. So let's talk about caller ID. Well, first of all, go to jamesfestini.com if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching or any of my products, that's where I'm at. More importantly, if your caller ID has been marked or flagged as spam, you got a problem, a little problem, maybe a big problem. Let's backdate mm, 20 years or so, the do not call list. You see, when I started in say 1993, you were able to get a list of phone numbers from someone like Criss Cross Directory or your title company. This was right around when DOS and Windows was coming out to date myself. But back then, let's say you had 1,000 homes in a neighborhood, you really never had more than 60%, 70% if you were lucky of the homes. I mean, there was always this bulk of unregistered numbers that you just didn't have. Haynes Crisscross Directory was one of the big ones. The title companies would give them to you. Then maybe you had 600 out of, out of 1,000. So come the do not call list, 2003 was when that happened. That more or less took our 600 uh, person phone list to about mm, say 350, 400. It annihilated at least 30, 40% of our phone list and counting. So now you were in a place where if you had a neighborhood of a thousand houses, you maybe only had 400 numbers at the end of the day, 300 numbers. So what was a person to do? If you're in compliance with the do not call list, you just find more numbers. You see, a lot of these telephone providers don't sell you all 300. Some of them sell you 250, some of them sell you 400, some of them are bad, some of them are good. So I've always said to my students, just create a database of all of them. It's not like they're sprouting up new numbers every day for that particular neighborhood. Collect as many numbers as you have. Make sure there's no duplicates. I can show you how. I help my one-on-one -on -one students all the time. Duplicates are the bane of my existence. It's the horrible thing. But it's possible to fix. But that's not the topic. 2003, we have about 400 numbers. Over the course of time, come 2007, now we have caller ID, which became such a big prolific information uh, gateway for identifying homeowners uh, or being identified to homeowners who is calling. So let's think about this. When you're calling someone, there are two thoughts that come into their head. Who is this and what do they want, right? So you have, according to a study from Microsoft back in 2002, four, and the release was about 2014. Basically, if you've ever heard someone say that you've got less than six seconds or eight seconds, uh, if you've ever heard anyone say, we have the attention span of a goldfish, that comes from a study from Microsoft about the attention span of consumers. Basically, you've got eight seconds to answer that two questions. You call a consumer, they wanna know who are you and what do you want, and you wanna know, here's, you wanna say, here's who I am and do you want to sell? Do you want to buy, right? That's the exchange. And you have less than, say, six, eight seconds to capture that attention. But now, now with around 2007, 8, 9, 10, with the smartphone, smartphones being so intertwined in our daily day to day, we now had the answer to one of those questions as consumers, who is this and what do they want? You would look at the caller ID and say, I don't know who this is, ignore it. And the behavior started coming about that we would ignore who was calling if they weren't in our phone book. Therefore begins the problem these telemarketers, scammers in particular, started doing what was called robocalling and spoofing. Robocalling, if you've heard either of these two terminologies, robocalling is a machine that calls out and says, hi, we're offering you a car insurance, your warranty is about to expire. You know the ones we're talking about, you get them all the time. Press one to talk to a live representative, press two to talk, that's illegal. Straight up illegal, robocalling is illegal. I'm not an attorney, I don't play one on TV, but I'm 
pretty sure it's illegal. California, for sure. You can't call on a machine. There's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer sets one up. You should watch it. Anyhow, spoofing was a technology where telemarketers got wise. What they would start doing is they would take telephone numbers that are local area codes. So for example, my phone, my area code is 714. My prefix is 767, right? My phone number is 714-767-5524. So what people would do is they would say, let's get a phone number that is 714-767, and that would register to local consumers to answer the phone. Basically, they were taking technology and making it appear as the caller ID was in your neighborhood. Now, if you get a call from someone out of the area, you're more likely to swipe it away and ignore it. But if you get a call from someone in your area, and let's say you have kids at school or your doctor or anything, the odds skyrocket that you're gonna answer it because it's someone local. Well, that was spoofing, that's illegal. You can't spoof a number. If you can't be called at that number and they call, it's, it's spoofing, it was like swiping the number. Worst of all was scammers or trolls would be able to take your caller ID Let's say, remember when you used to press one to check your voicemail on your phone? And then you had the option to say, I don't wanna press my password, right? You'd hold one and then it would say, please enter your password and you can check your voicemail. Remember when that option came about and hopefully none of you still have it. I don't think anyone still can do this, but remember the option where you could say, hey, don't press a voicemail, just go straight to my uh, messages. If you wanted to hear your voicemail messages, remember? If you spoof someone's number, like let's say they spoof your, your caller ID, if they pretend to be you and they call into your voicemail, they didn't need your password so they could hack your phone <laughs> and like, oh gosh, don't even start. It was bad. So let's fast forward to 2019, 2020. 2019, there was a function, uh, uh, an event, where they call it stir shaken. Look it up. It was, in my opinion, more devastating, more impactful, more hurtful to us as legitimate telemarketers to call people. This stir shaken, what it did was the, the man, the feds, who was controlling the do not call list, was having so much problems because Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, all of those companies couldn't really do anything with their caller IDs because the feds were really controlling the phone numbers. And there were so many complaints from people on their cell phones saying, I keep getting these scam calls and they really couldn't do anything with it. There was no unified platform. So basically the feds and the, uh, the big telephone companies implemented stir shaken right and and it's an acronym for something but at the end of the day if you noticed in 2020 all of the sudden when you got a call it said spam or suspected spam or possible scam did you just start seeing that no one really ever said huh that's new you just it just happened you see, in 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you would have to pay a monthly fee to True Caller, uh, Nomo Robo, Mr. Number. There were all sorts of apps out there that you could pay a service to, and uh, users would flag someone as a robocall, and then it was kind of like the community would report other calls and they would create this pool of phone numbers and then you would know it's possible spam, possible scam. Here's the problem. When Stir Shaken was implemented, AT&T, T-Mobile, -T Verizon, all of these guys kicked in technology to combat this. So now imagine this, you're a legitimate real estate agent and you're making your calls. Let's say you're using Mojo and you're, because I say use Mojo, they sponsor me, thank you very much. Mojo, they're the, still the best CRM out there. Let's say you're using Mojo and all of a sudden your call rates drop. Have you ever tried calling yourself or better yet, has anyone ever picked up the phone and said, hello, suspected spam. And you're like, what did you call me? Right? It's because their phone number was popping up. This is about two years ago. I started hearing that and I knew, I knew about stir shaking. That was something that I knew, but I never knew what it would turn into. So here's the back end of this. All of these telecommunications companies partnered with different 
software companies. So right now we're in the wild west, the unknown territory. It's still all still very new, but it's impacting most of you right now if you're picking up the phone. I'll tell you the solution in a second, but you maybe you want to understand this, maybe I'm talking too much. What happens, let's say my I work with T-Mobile, I'm with T-Mobile, my T-Mobile caller ID calls into your Verizon network all over town, right? I'm calling all of these numbers, 100 contacts a day, right? Hundreds and hundreds of outbound calls. The algorithms of each of these softwares, whether it's T-Mobile is receiving the call, AT&T is receiving the call, Sprint is receiving the call, Pacific Bell is receiving the call, whoever is receiving the call, each one of these, and this is the unfortunate part because there's no one platform, no one answer to what behavior you need to do. But as your caller ID calls into, say, Verizon's network, Verizon will say, hey, this caller ID has been calling into our network all over town. They have this algorithm set up, calling all over town and each one of their calls are like two or three seconds. They're being hung up on. There's never a connection, but they're pinging our network 1,000 times in a day, 500 times in a day, market a suspected spam. So this is what's happening. Without a consumer registering themselves on the do not call list, their phone company is pretty much registering you on a somewhat do not call list which is in my opinion worse because now that do not call list is automatically popping up that says, hey, this guy's a possible spam, don't answer it. So now it's almost like being automatically reverse engineered, placing yourself on the do not call list and your call rates drop. So here's what I know to be true. This is what I monitor. Right around now, the pickup rates are about 6%, which means in my world, if I dial 100 contacts, 100 phone numbers, about six people will engage me in that conversation of whether or not they wanna sell. Now, maybe 10 or 15 or 20 pick up, but they're um, you know, maybe a wrong number, maybe it's a fax machine, maybe mom's not home, maybe something else. But I'm talking about me being able to say, hi, my name's Agent with Company. I was calling to see if you had any interest in selling your house. Thank you very much, have a nice day. That's what I call a contact, 6%. After this stir shaken happened, I and this is universal by the way, I know for sure, because I have a large league. If you're in Mojo and you use Mojo, there's a back end kind of a gamification, a game of, uh, ranks where if you don't know about it check it out it's on the dashboard where you can see other callers making their calls you can see their numbers who's making calls who's setting appointments what is their pickup rate all sorts of interesting data if you're a data person if you're a data, if you don't care you don't care but if you want to maximize the amount of time you spend outbound calling and you don't want to waste time sitting there waiting for the phone to pick up the best thing in the world would be a higher pickup rate, higher than 6%, right? But once this stir shaking started happening, I started seeing numbers like five, four, some days three, and I was like, something's not right. And so I started going back in and diving deeper. Okay, how can I fix it? And everybody knows this. Now we were looking for new caller IDs, right? We we're changing our caller ID and getting new phone numbers, buying new phones, buying different uh, voice over IP. But it was still, if you make a certain, if you make enough calls, it gets flagged. What can you do about this, right? What can you do? I'm gonna offer you the solution. It just so happens to be that for the past six months, I have been putting together this written test of all of these networks and information. And if you're watching this, if you're listening to the podcast, you don't know what I'm flicking through. If you're watching, you'll see that I have my iPad and I'm scrolling through pages upon pages of notes and screenshots and all of the information that I'm discovering to understand how to keep my pickup rate at six. So let me tell you, rumors of people getting higher pickup rates, rumors of people getting lesser pickup rates. The goal is me, I'm happy as pie at 6%. If I have a 7% day, I'm good. So if you're looking at your thing, you're like, oh, nobody's answering. <laughs> Look at your pickup. And if it's like 6%, so you know what? That's actually not bad. I mean, hell, I came from 2003, 1993, 75% pickup rate. I would get, like I'd make, I, I was able to make two, 300 contacts a day and half a day. Now it takes me four or five hours to do this thing with, um, you know, with a dialer. So 
understand your perspective of what sucks and what doesn't suck accept those things you cannot change and the strength to change the things you can sort of thing so here's my best advice i'm going to give to you right now first thing i'm going to recommend to you is you go i'm going to give you some websites here some solutions so right now the most important thing you want to do to solve this problem first of all is if you're using an automated dialer right a machine that makes lots and lots and lots of calls and hangs up on lots and lots of people you want to you want to avoid having what's called an abandon rate the FCC the man says that there's certain percentages that you shouldn't abandon in my opinion why would you abandon really any anyhow you want to talk to them so what's the point of having all of these outbound dialers if you're just hanging up on people I, I want to talk to them sometimes people will pick up the phone and go hey did you just hang up on me I go no I I want to talk to you anyhow my name's James I would <laughs> right it's like no I, I want to talk to you why would I hang up on you uh, but they're getting hup, hung up on all the time so here are some possible uh, triggers that I've discovered uh, from conversations there's right now I can see there's two companies three companies and I'm not going to mention them yet because I want to get a partnership with them where I can offer you discounts because these companies deal with these massive providers to help you remediate or fix your caller ID let's say your caller ID gets flagged as spam they they offer software and solutions but they're just too expensive so I'm not even gonna promote them until they're cheap enough for me to say you know what it's worth it otherwise you would be paying an arm and a leg these solutions I know will work for now if you're running a larger boiler room reach out to me directly if this is a bigger problem where you want to spend like a lot more money on things that's fine but as an individual real estate agent these are simple solutions these are the problems so what I found is if you're making outbound calls into any network and again each one of these networks have their own algorithm so AT&T uses what's called Hiya, H-I-Y-A dot com. What I've done is I've subscribed to Hiya on the app. It's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, don't get me, don't quote me on this, but the app on my iPhone is about 30 bucks a year. So it's a caller ID application, but it also helps me look at my phone number and monitor it. Now, again, don't quote me on this stuff because I'm still just trying to figure this out. And I'm trying to do what these really expensive companies do on my own, right? Because it's expensive. If I can look up my own caller ID, right? For a while, say you know, two years ago, I would have two or three friends who are on two different networks. Maybe you're like this, where you'd have a friend who's on Verizon, a friend who's on AT&T, a friend, one who's on Sprint, and you would call each other with your caller ID and say, hey man, what's it showing up? Well, these are softwares now where you can check what's it showing up. These are different sites, but there's so many. Every time I open up a new site, I find 10 more. It's the it's a rabbit hole. And I would like you to put in the comment section, hey James, thank you for going down this rabbit hole for me. I thought I was going crazy. Thank you for going crazy for Because I, I mean, it's just, and unfortunately I'm, I'm kind of liking this because it's a puzzle. I'm trying to solve the problem. There are band-aids to the problem, but they're expensive and I'm not gonna spend money to check my caller ID. I, I, there's, there's solutions. I know a guy right now who claims to be getting 20% pickup rate from this, for 20% from this. Another one who's getting 15% from this. I, I'm not getting that. Maybe it's California, but he's in New York. I don't know, I, I don't know. Um, to each his own, everyone gets their own. So here's what I'm gonna recommend is when you're making your outbound calls, keep your drop rate low. In other words, if you're using more than three line dialer, like 10, 15, 20, it's really, it's a waste. You're burning through numbers. And what I know what you're saying, well, I can get more numbers. Well, if you're spending money on new caller IDs, fine. But you're in a very small window of time where that window is going to close and it would be in your best interest to have a few caller IDs and take care of those caller IDs rather than having hundreds, I've heard in some companies, thousands of caller IDs where these companies have these dialers that they make so many outbound calls and abandon so many people on the hangout, meaning that they'll ring and then when someone picks up, they just hang up because they're, there's a 30 line dialer, only one person can talk to them. What's the point of a 30 line dialer? There's only so, there's this like tipping point where 
you know, there's only so many people you can talk to. There's only so many numbers in your geographical territory. There's only so many caller IDs. I noticed that because I had an application where I was picking up caller IDs for free. And all of a sudden, 714, my prefix, they don't have them anymore. It's like they burned them. And if it does pop up in the rotation, it's burned. It's scam likely. So why would you buy a caller ID that's scam likely? Which is another pro tip, by the way. If you're about to pick up a caller ID, if you're about to get the phone, if you're about to sign up for a service, here's what I recommend. That Haya app. With Haya on my, on my phone, now you don't have to pay for it if you don't want. It's like a caller ID call blocking thing. But with that app, you can look up a number and it'll tell you right there, suspected spam, possible scam. And if someone's gonna issue you a phone number, say, you know, I don't want that number. Now, Haya, again, think big. AT&T is Haya, right? So you wanna make sure that Haya, the website or the application or both, because again, I've been testing with someone smarter than me, and we're also finding strange discoveries about Haya online says one thing, but Haya on the app says another. But regardless, uh, you could spend your whole day trying to find a good caller ID just to pick up the phone and call. Just pick up the phone and call. Another thing I would recommend is when you're dialing with a specific caller ID, pay attention to the pickup rate and write it down and say, hey, you know what? This caller ID got me this pickup rate. What is it about that caller ID? If you're gonna go get more caller IDs through different applications, you're gonna buy you know, other ones. I have other solutions for buying more caller IDs, but they gotta be legitimate. 10, 15 lines if you want more phone lines so you have more caller IDs. But my suggestion is again, get 10 phone numbers and rotate through those so they uh, get hot and cool down. Make sure if one gets flagged that you know. To, I mean, it's 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 kind of a part time job now to maintain your caller ID reputation. It's it's a nightmare. But here's solution. First solution. Let's talk solution. Go to freecallregistry.com. Freecallregistry.com. Put in your phone number. Put in all of your phone numbers. Put in your legitimate name. Don't make something up. My opinion is if you're out there cold calling and you don't want them to know who you are, you shouldn't be cold calling. That's just that's just my gut. So I'm not afraid because I'm in compliance. I comply with the do not call list. I comply with TCPA uh, rules and standards. So if someone ever got mad at me, I would just say thank you very much. Put them on my personal do not call list and add them to the company do not call list. I just I don't want to talk to people like that ever again, so it's okay. But if you're calling and being nasty or have a high hang up rate and then they can call you back, that's a problem. So you're gonna at some point have to have phone numbers that can, like Mojo makes you validate a caller ID. When you provide Mojo a caller ID to outbound call, they make you call in and then verify that number. That's the rules. That's the rules. You can't like I was with another company that they didn't do that, which basically I could put any caller ID, which basically let me spoof. And I didn't know it. Like I was going the, the, the legitimate way. And then one day I was like, why am I not getting validated? Can I just type any number I want? Uh, that's not good. I think I'm going to disassociate myself from this company. This doesn't sound right. Okay. So here we go. Verizon, you wanna, you, let's say your phone got marked as spam, right? First thing you do is register your phone number at freecallregistry.com. Now there are two locations, say three locations. Now again, you go down the rabbit hole, there are dozens of places where you could and should do this. But if your call has been marked spam on Verizon, Let's say you know. How do you know? Uh, Verizon, from what I'm seeing, if you know something I don't, please put in the comment section. Educate me because I'm learning as I go. I've still got my notes. Um, for what I know right now, there's no way to check Verizon's database to see if you've been flagged. However, if you have Verizon and you call yourself and it says possible spam or scam. Now, one other uh, thing you should know is that if your phone number is in your phone book and you call yourself and it shows up yourself, I know this is kind of a no brainer, but some people aren't high tech. If you've already have your caller ID in your phone, 
you have to delete that contact so it shows as no contact so that you can see what it truly says. But if your caller ID is in there as your person, let's say you're on the Verizon, you wanna test yourself and you dial yourself, oh, it comes up my name. No, that's not the case. You're also going to see in some places there's a little checkbox when the call comes in. It's called verification. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but there's attestation, which is different levels of quality of phone numbers that you can buy. From what I've uh, discovered, a attestation, the best quality phone number, are the ones you have on your landline and the ones you get when you buy a new cellular phone. However, you buy a new cell phone and you get a new SIM and you get a new phone number, it's highly possible that you're marked as spam. So what you need to do is um, go to freecallregistry.com. You can also go, if you're, uh, it's called First Orion. So T-Mobile, right, T-Mobile, is also call transparency. Some of you might have heard that. If you go to calltransparency.com, you can register your number there. Um, Free Call Registry also has Orion Call Transparency. So it's kind of built in. There's one website that's freecallregistry.com that it seems like they've combined several of them so that it, it, it just do them both, okay? Just register your number on these, okay? Now, with Verizon, you go to voicespamfeedback.com, voicespamfeedback.com forward slash VSF. Um, I guess I'll put these in the notes, right? I'll, I'll put these in the notes, but voicespamfeedback.com because Verizon maintains an independent database for their call filter app. So calling parties and customers who believe their call has been mislabeled needs to go through that platform, but I don't believe it makes any sense for you to go in there and just register your number because it needs to be flagged. Now, if you're with Verizon, your number should be validated. I'm almost to the point where I'm gonna buy a Verizon phone just so that I can have my certain softwares and test things just so I can do it. But at that point, I should just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, there'll be an update to this video one day and I'll say, remember what I talked about? Uh, there's this company that does it all and you just pay them. But for right now, right now the solution is uh, freecallregistry.com, register your information. I I can't guarantee where it goes to. I, can't, I, I can guarantee the results will impact for the positive. You, your caller ID call spam situation will be different for every network. Um, but T-Mobile, again, is First Orion, uh, First Orion, formerly known as Call Transparency. They handle T-Mobile's spam app. Also, I'm with T-Mobile. They have something called Scam Shield or Spam Shield. That's an app on your phone where you can look up your phone numbers. Again, this is something I do on the daily. You can go on to, I go on to Haya, right? My app Haya, which I purchased, 30 bucks a year. But Scam Shield or Spam Shield through T-Mobile is also an app where you can look up a number and it'll say whether it's been reported. It will also uh, mention like unknown caller. I'll have you know that being an unknown caller is almost as bad as being marked as spam because people don't like answering unknown. For us now that you're a little bit more educated, you know the difference, it don't matter, but for the, 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 the civilian, unknown is unknown and they're just not going to answer it. And the, the whole goal is here to try to get people to answer the phone. If they're not interested, they're not interested. But if you can get your call pickup rates, if you can remove that spam likely, holy moly. So AT&T, again, uses Haya. Verizon has their own thing. So if you go to First Orion, First Orion Haya, and Transaction Network Services, all of those have designed a streamlined telephone number registration platform. So First Orion, I'm trying to want to educate this again. First Orion is AT and uh, First Orion is T-Mobile. AT&T is Haya. So that's why I say if you register at Free Call Registry and you put in your name, put in a, your phone number, that should handle T-Mobile and um, AT&T. Now, as far as Verizon, you can register there. Now, beyond the scope of this, keeping your pickup rates. Um, making short conversations, um, trying to keep them on the conversations. I've heard from 15 seconds to five seconds when it comes to the phone call, these algorithms that identify what the caller is. 
Uh, Spokio is another platform. Spokio, for many years I've been using Spokio and like whitepages.com. When you have a caller ID or you find say an expired or for sale by owner and you wanna do a little uh, stock curating and you wanna find out who they are, Spokio is one of the biggest ones out there. Spokio recently launched an area at the bottom of their app. Spokio is an application where you can look up an address and it'll give you everything. Like you know those one websites where like find out what such and such did on you know in the jail records or whatever. It's not that extreme, but you know the ones I'm talking about where you can look up things. It's so robust. Spokio is robust. I have an affiliate link probably in the comments below. If you are gonna sign up with Spokio, it's super cheap. I am a power user of it. If there's a contact who reaches out to me, like a lead or some inbound something, I will go to Spokio, uh, I'll run a skip trace, I'll, I'll make sure all of that data is filled in before I make that phone call. Okay, just so I know who they are, if it's legitimate, whatever. Um, but Spokio, now at the bottom of their page, has a, uh, formula where they're using that if all of the sudden the uh, the Google engines or Safari or whatever all of a sudden people start searching your number let's say someone sees a caller ID right you get a call from someone you don't know who it is you press copy and you paste it into Google and you hit search highly likely that when you hit search your first search result is going to be spokio because they're the big like white pages of the universe when people click on that what spokio is doing is saying if all of the sudden that caller id is being searched on google or whatever more often they're going to register it as a higher spam risk so be careful of your behavior um i would say I personally have about 10 legitimate phone numbers that I am tracking and monitoring, making sure. So if I'm gonna make calls on one number today, I'm not gonna make calls on it tomorrow or the next day. I'll go like 10 days in between. And sometimes you don't make your calls, so it could be 10, 12, 15 days in between. But you don't wanna just pummel people. Now, I've had people say that they have one phone number registered with first, uh, with what is it, free, caller, free call registry. They've done it once and now they get a t that 20% pickup rate guy, real suspicious, I, I, there's always some. But that they've done this and that they make all the calls they want and they're not getting flagged as spam and they're getting a 20% pickup rate, bless your heart if you can pull it off. Oh man, I, I'd be on cloud nine. 20% pickup rate, I'd be talking to 300 people a day. I mean, most people would be like, 20% pickup rate, that means I can work for two hours and I can take the day off? Me, I'm like, wait, I can work even harder? My friends, this is a 30 plus minute video. I hope that I've enlightened you in some way. I hope I've provided you some value in some way. I hope that this is a solution to the problem. If you need more solutions to your problems, hire me as your coach, jamesfestini.com forward slash training. This is the kind of coach I am. I'm a real estate agent first, 28, 29 years now. And this sort of stuff is the stuff I dive into. I, I enjoy this kind of thing. And if this is your problem, if your problem is lead generation and follow up, that's my jam. I can help you lead generate and follow up. I can help you solve your problems for your caller ID, making sure that your call transparency is legitimate, having the scripts and dialogues, the role play, all that stuff. I am you, except for I beat myself up to find out how I can make me better, therefore you're better. If you have any questions, reach out to me, please. If I have said anything that doesn't make sense, put it in the comment section. If you know something more, or if you, better yet, man, this is a community thing. Like I've never been so giving in my knowledge as I have on this one, because I know people know things. And every time I go into another new website, I find something new and I'm like, Oh, like even just last night, I found this one link that had a lot of answers. So the more I dig in, the more I know. I would love to know from you guys in the comment section. Tell me your pickup rate, right? Tell me your percentage pickup rate, your um, solutions. How did you achieve that, right? Uh, your pickup rate, how many calls you make. What, what are you finding on your end? Say, hey, you know what, I've never been, because I've had people say, I've, I've never done any of this and I'm not marked as spam and I make a thousand calls a day. I'm like, mm, I'd like to know what you're doing because I'd like to know the same. So anyhow, I'm constantly talking to other agents who are in this space, who are 
geeking out on this stuff really hardcore like i'm not even i'm just touching the surface to translate the gibberish that's below the surface on this situation i hope i've made some sense i hope i've enlightened you i hope i'm really one of the first ones to point this out and offer you a solution call transparency.com right or aka freecallregistry.com if your number is marked as spam there are several places where you can unmark them as spam uh, oh, finally, Nomo Robo, Robo Killer. I hear you don't get off those lists. Those are like apps and they're not that easy. So if your phone number pops up on like those two apps, eh, your phone number's dead for those apps, but they're user run. So it's not the end of the world. It's not like everybody uses it. But anyhow, there's just so much. And every conversation I have with someone who knows more than me, I'm frantically writing notes and re readjusting my knowledge on this information. Find me and hire me as your coach so that you're not caught behind this clear shift in the marketplace. Now more than ever, you need to be making your 100 contacts a day. And if it takes you all day to make 100 contacts, so be it. If you can do it in half a day, then you need to make 200 contacts a day. That's just the way it is. Make hay while the sun shines. It's been shining for the last two years. It's about to get a little bit dark, I encourage you to work even harder, please. Don't get out of the business because you're not willing to work. That's just not a good excuse. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Get back to work. Now, have you seen my amazing local market videos for my real estate business? In one word, Teradatum. They make videos branded to your brokerage and automatically update them every month with videos by zip code, county, city, and your hyper local market, and it's extremely affordable. Have you guys seen my website lately? Well, you should. It's absolutely gorgeous. I owe it all to Zentap. They will help you with your advertising using your MLS, IDX, and social media to attract an audience and engage your leads using sophisticated bots. Now, you're gonna need a powerful CRM to manage all of this, and as you know, Mojo Selling Solutions is more than just a dialer. It's the most powerful CRM bar none. Mojo provides you expires for sell by owners, and that is the third list of data, along with email and mail campaigns. For more information on any of these products along with my personal coaching and training products, go to jamesfestini.com today. Now, get back to work.